Welcome to the apiary. This is Jake B. Man Barker with Golden Fox Farms talking to you about bees today. I'm getting ready to get into some hives to see if they're broodless so we can use oxalic acid treatments. Uh, but today the video I actually have for you is a little bit older. This video was shot near the last uh, two-thirds, last three-quarters of October. Maybe the last week or before the last week of October. I was in one of my out yards removing feeders and getting colonies weighed and ready to go into winter. And I came across a couple of hives that are good launch points for other discussions we will have. Uh, namely, one hive, well, actually two hives, were varroa losses in that apiary. And we actually witnessed a late season swarm, which is also something that bears discussion that we really don't talk much about. Uh, now, both of these subjects easily could be 30 minute videos in and of themselves. I'm trying to make my videos not all be 45 minute long behemoths. So we're going to keep this one short. Just look at the interesting things that happened in that apiary in about 15 minutes. Uh, and then we'll expand upon those points of interest in future videos later on in the series. So with that, let's go to that out yard and see what was going on. We actually start with the last five hives in this apiary. Here I am removing feed cans. There's bees on the feed cans. There's bees in the hive. Everything looks as it should from the top. Uh, we'll get the inner covers on these and get them weighed. Uh, now when we weigh it, we find out the hive on the right is 55 pounds. It should be 70. There was definitely enough food there. So that is suggesting something has gone wrong. And when we weigh the hive to its left, we find it's even worse. 20. This is going to be our lightweight, isn't it? She's 38 pounds. This hive is troubled. Uh, that is in the starvation range. Uh, so let's look in here. I'm willing to bet they've been robbed out. That's my gambles. They've been robbed out. There were bees in here. There weren't a lot of bees. And the feed cans were empty. And that's exactly what it is. This is a dead hive. They didn't make it for whatever reason. And you see that rough raised surface there has just like been shredded right through here, that shredded area. That is a classic sign of robbing. This is an empty box. So what is robbing and why does it look like this robbing is where area bees identify a weak colony that still has stores in it, in this case honey stores those neighboring bees will raid this colony often in force to steal those stores now these raiding bees are pretty aggressive in their tactics uh, they can easily kill weak hives with the amount of fighting and shenanigans that goes on when these robbing events occur. The reason why the comb itself gets that jagged appearance, these robbing bees, unlike your normal house bees, are super aggressive to the comb. They rip and tear the comb apart because they want to access the honey stores as fast as possible and get out of this hive and back home. So unlike what you would see in a hive managed by its own bees, who are very delicate and very protective of the comb, these robbing bees will annihilate the comb. And that's how that jagged surface appears, or why it does. Uh, you'll also notice in a robbed out hive, this jagged surface only appears where the honey band would have been. The, the other side of this frame, as I put it in, you can actually see has a bunch of that torn comb. Now, I should note when I'm talking about robbing in this instance, I'm talking about the aggressive robbing, the highly visible robbing. Uh, like you see in this instance here, the hive on the left is being mobbed by bees and being robbed out. Something's gone wrong in that hive, and they're just getting clobbered. Uh, the reason why I can say it's the hive on the left is notice where the dead bees are. They're all in front of the left hive. Now, that hive on the right, with all of that activity going on out there, definitely has bees trying to get into it, 
but that hive has maintained its defenses. Or it's an empty hive, one or the other. Uh, but that defensive posture, that staying inside and protecting the fort, means its bees cannot forage. And that hive ends up in lockdown and starts losing weight. Uh, that's the explanation for that light nuke next to that dead nuke. Now, you won't always see this pile of dead out the front door. Uh, that requires the hive to have a large population when it failed or a large enough population. A lot of times, these hives, when they do finally get robbed out, it's because they lost all of their adult bees for other reasons, and they aren't plainly visible in front of the hive. Now, I should note, the hives only look like this when they're actively being robbed. Uh, once a hive has been clobbered, it'll quiet down significantly and look more like these uh, dead hives we're seeing here today. Uh, I should note there's more than one type of robbing behavior. We'll get into the different kinds of robbing behaviors and its signs and symptoms and all that stuff on a video just on robbing on a later date. Uh, for now, let's go back to the apiary and figure out what we can do with this dead out. Uh, I could take it out and use it for something else. I really don't need equipment anywhere. Uh, it will act as a thermal break for this thing. Now that said, it does have pollen patties in it. I'm going to get those patties out because those will breed a boatload of small hive beetles. That's what pollen patties are really good for. These rotten things down here. Yeah, those. We gotta get these out of here. If they're just outside where the sun and everything else can get to them, they won't have small hive beetles growing in them. But this is a dead out. And it's not uncommon. And I'll tell you, just knowing it was a weak hive I combined together, I'm really not that worried about figuring it out. Uh, it's almost certainly they just were too small or the queen failed or something like that. Just don't don't spend a boatload of time on these things. It, it is always good to have a quick look see. If I'm on a bet. Ooh. Okay, if you see a friend that looks like this. Notice the spotty pattern, a couple blown cells, a couple of cells with pinholes. And there's not many dead bees around. It's almost certainly a Varroa kill. What happens when Varroa kills a hive is they go out the front door when they die. You don't see them. Uh, I'm going to look and see if I find any... Oh, there is. Okay. Let's see if this side has it. One of the things you can look for is uric acid deposits on the tops of these cells, because that's the mites fecal deposits and it's not going to show up on the camera just because how light they are but in those spots if you hold this thing like this and the light's good you can see these little white spots in some of these cells so this is definitely a varroa kill uh that shouldn't be a surprise uh this apiary always has some varroa kills there's a lot of treatment free beekeepers around me out here so there's always and there's also feral populations and all that stuff so there's always a bit of a backfeeding issue where you can have a Varroa kill, no matter what your treatment schedule is. Uh, it can always happen, and that is exactly what this is. This is a Varroa kill. So what should I do with this? Mm, a couple different options. I could take it home and throw it in the freezer to preserve it. It'll kill any wax moths that are living in this stuff, but the reality is I'm not seeing any wax moth in here yet. And it's October 24th. The freeze should have happened eight days ago. Uh, so the freeze is more or less imminent, maybe six days out. I'm just going to ignore this stuff. It can stay here until next year, and I'll find a purpose for it then if other bees haven't moved in beforehand. To reiterate, that was 35 pounds at starvation in that single, or the double nuke as it was. Wiped out, all empties. Oh, dear me. 
I hear a lot of bees. Or this way. Oh. I have a loose swarm flying around me. Which is not a totally unheard of occurrence. This time of year, you'll get a lot of little itty bitty raider swarms. They're looking for a weak colony to take over. Now, I said weak. They don't want a dead colony. Because a dead colony, they don't have the resources to keep it alive. They want to find a colony that has enough bees in it for them to sneak in. But also enough bees in it to where it's worth taking over. And they'll get in that hive. And, as I said, take it over. Uh, and use that hive's resources as their own. Uh, I'm do that one there. All this is is half-inch hardware cloth. And I use these sniffs to cut it because they cut it pretty well. Now that one is the dead out. There, you can see me bees are still going into this thing. I'm not worried about the bees going into it, per se. They're just going to do their thing. I'm going to try not to crush anyone. Uh, but I do want to preserve that comb, because comb is golden. So, being I just looked in that box, and I know there wasn't a mouse in there. By doing that, I know I'm going to keep that space mouse free. So I'll be able to come back and use that comb next year. Excuse me, girly. All right, here we are at the bottom of this apiary, getting this five-frame double put back together. This one took a bunch of feet. I probably fit it close to 110 pounds finished weight, and it's not going to be anywhere close to that. The reason why is the hive next to it, the one with the smoker on top. That hive was a large hive that about mm, six weeks ago, eight weeks ago, I realized it had severe mite issues. It had PMS. It was going to collapse. Uh, let's get the weight on this thing. Okay, 70 pounds total. So yeah, it's a lot shorter from where we think it should be. And the reason why is when this hive next to it collapsed, it became subject to a robbing event. With a robbing event, a bunch of bees are trying to get into that hive next door. And that means the bees in this little hive, they, they aren't necessarily being robbed, but they're getting mobbed by some robber bees. So they have to go into a defensive mode to keep everyone out and keep their stuff theirs. Uh, for the sake of discussion, we can weigh this big hive and see how much weight it lost. Now, that weight it lost would have been, you know, bees dying, going out, whatever. Uh, but most of that weight went out the door as robbed honey stores. Uh, so we'll have a look see here. Now, one of the things I did do when I discovered this, okay, this is 56 pounds. Uh, the hive was 86, so we've lost 30 pounds. Uh, that's a lot of weight going out the front door. Uh, one of the things I did was I treated this hive with formic to make sure I killed the mites in the hive. I expected the hive to collapse. I wanted to capture and kill those mites there before they could escape and go to the rest of my hives. By choosing to manage the apiary, by choosing not to try to salvage that colony, I was able to control that problem before that problem spread elsewhere. And that's really why I emphasize manage the apiary. Don't focus too much on managing the individual colony. Okay, so we can go ahead and get this nuke strap back down. Uh, you guys hear all those bees? Uh, I, I'm seeing all these bees. That usurpation swarm I saw up the hill is actually coming this way. Uh, and they're probably going to try to get into this little yellow hive because this is a weak hive. Now remember, they need weak hives, not dead hives. So this is probably where they're going to try to set up shop. Uh, you can see all these girls flying around. Uh, they, uh, gosh... They they might be trying they might be setting up the land on the bottom board or this uh, hive stand here. We'll see what happens. Uh, we'll be we'll be coming back to watch this one. Check this one out as we go. Uh, I'll leave the camera down here. Can you see that little swarm that's set up under there? There's some on this side, there's some on that side. Well, that's exactly what that is. That's a 
That's a raiding party. You'll see these swarms called usurpation swarms, and what they really aim to do is to charge into this hive with their own queen and dispatch the hive's native queen so their queen can take over this hive. They'll just charge in and help themselves. Now, finally welcome back to look at this. After loading up my truck, did we see where that swarm went to? There's definitely some bees under it still. A lot of things that you can run into with these screen bottom boards. Oh, that is a screen bottom board. Is sometimes the raiding colonies will think that's where the entrance is because that's where they get a strong smell of the bee colony. Uh, so anytime you see a bunch of bees checking out a bottom board, that should be sending alarm bells in your head. Those bees don't belong to this hive. That's why they're looking at that bottom board. Yeah, yeah, that usurpation colony is trying to get in from the bottom. That's exactly what that was. We'll see what happens to them. I ain't worried about it. You know, if that was a swarm coming back to this colony, they know where the entrance is. Usurpation colonies, usurpation swarms, are often trouble. That's a well associated with African behavior. Something I don't want in my apiary. Uh... I've used them uh, for, you know, experimentations and stuff, but they're not something I would seek out. So that's just one of those things that you don't see unless you spend a lot of time in the apiary and watch what's going on. Uh, that swarm came from somewhere uphill. Uh, I don't think it was one of mine. Uh, I really don't. And they're still going to try to get in here tonight, but they'll eventually figure out they can't get in from the bottom and give up and either go back or stimulate in one of these other hives. Good luck and happy beaking. Best thing to do with that stuff oh, is use it. Oh, she's on my ear. That's tickled. She's going. <laughs>